Welcome to the first international conference of Judaica curators. I'm so happy to see familiar faces, but even more excited to see some new ones, people that we've been in touch with, uh, you know, with electronic mails, and uh, now to actually to see everyone is, is very exciting for me. Uh, I hope that you will enjoy the conference and benefit from this, what this library and this great city can offer. This is the first international conference of Judaica curators. I'm well aware of the fact that not all of you bear this title, curator. In fact, very few of you use this term. The word curator derives from the Latin curare, referring to the person who takes care. A curator is a keeper of a cultural heritage in a museum, a library, or an archive. A curator is a content specialist responsible for an institution's collection. So whether or not you're actually using this title, you are by definition a curator. Every person in this room takes care of a portion of Jewish culture. The conference was organized by the National Library in collaboration and consultation with an international advisory board, which included distinguished members from some of the most important cultural institutions in the world. I would like to thank them for their important contribution. Um, Hadassah Asulin, here from Jerusalem. Malachi Betari is unfortunately not, uh, is in Oxford. I mean, not or, unfortunate for him, but uh, <laughs> so Cesar is here for him. Uh, Dudi from bar -Ilan University, Jean-Claude from Alliance, Bill Gross, our good friend from Tel Aviv, Shimon from Russia, Sharon from New York, and Peggy, I, I didn't see Peggy yet, is she here? Um, I, I think Peggy's coming tomorrow, um, graduation of a grandson, I believe. And Emil, of course, Ilana uh, from, from the British Library. You invited participants have been selected on the basis of your professional expertise and your pivotal role among developers and keepers of Judaica collections. Thank you for making this trip and contributing to the success of this event. Curators usually take care of their own collections, many times competing against each other. This is what we would expect from a curator, somebody cares about his own collection. But this conference will not teach you or not make you a better curator uh, by teaching you how to compete with other, other institutions. In fact, on the contrary, it will focus on ways to work together. We will look into ways of harnessing 21st century technology to foster collaborative <coughs> strategies and partnerships. We will hear about the National Library's strategic plan for renewal and about collection policies, but that will merely set the pl platform for discussion. The coming Olympics are not about London, <laughs> and this conference is not about the National Library of Israel. It's about the heritage of the Jewish people, how to best collect, preserve, and disseminate this culture. Most of the time, we uh, we will be spending thinking of ways to maximize technology in order to centralize catalogs, create international databases, uh, and to collect collaboratively. Discussions will also focus on the potential international partnerships hold in order to revolutionize the world of Judaica collection with regard to Hebrew printed books, Judaica ephemera, Hebrew manuscripts, and Jewish archival material. The National Library of Israel takes a leading role in these attempts by simply facilitating them. The various projects that will be discussed during the conference are yours just as much as they are ours. In addition to the content sessions, participants will enjoy the opportunity for additional informal interaction during the meals provided. It's a very Jewish thing having those meals and uh, I hope you enjoy them. In, um, Recreational activities include an organized visit to the Jerusalem Archaeological Park. Uh, last night, people asked me, when are we going to have time to speak? So that's really the time. <laughs> the conference forum provides an exciting op opportunity for participants to engage with colleagues and to strengthen ties between institutions. We would like you to use this opportunity to make new friends and, most importantly, new partnerships. I would like to thank all those who have worked very hard to make this conference successful. And again, for all the participants who represent almost 20 countries from around the globe. I hope we did not forget any flags. And I would like now to invite Mr. David Bloomberg, the chairman of the board of the National Library of Israel, to open this historical event. Mr. Bloomberg, so I was told, 
uh, will speak about the significance of collaborations between cultural institutions. Bokatov. וברוכים הבאים גבירותיי ורבותיי ערב הכנס הזה כשדנו בשאלה מה שפה תדובר בכנס בעצם הגישה הטבעית הייתה שנדבר אנגלית כולם פה דוברי אנגלית אבל במחשבה שנייה חשבנו שלא ראוי שהספרייה הלאומית בנושא כל כך חשוב כמו אוסף היהדות, דיון בינלאומי בנושא אוסף יהדות, השפה היחידה שתדובר תהיה אנגלית. ולכן אנחנו אה, נערכנו בדרך כזאת שיהיה פה אה, תרגום סימולטני, כל אחד ידבר בשפתו וכרצונו וכל אחד יוכל להקשיב. זאת הערה ראשונה כדי להרוויח זמן, הערה שנייה עשרה ניסים נאמר במשנה נעשו לאבותינו בבית המקדש ואחד מהם עומדים צפופים ומשתחווים רווחים אז אני קצת מצטער ואולי לא מצטער בכלל על העובדה שאנחנו יושבים באולם קטן ודחוס מאוד בתוך כותלי הספרייה הלאומית. אנחנו העדפנו את זה על פני קיום הכנס באולם גדול ורחב מחוץ לספרייה הלאומית. חשבנו שראוי שהכנס הזה אכן יתקיים בספרייה ובין היתר כדי ליצור את הביקוש בעתיד בבניין החדש שלנו למקום מתאים וראוי ליצירת כנסים כאלה ואני מבטיח לכם שזה מה שיהיה ולכן אני לא בטוח שהכנס הבא אבל בוודאי הכנס שלאחריו כבר יהיה בבניין החדש אבל אני מניח שאנחנו נוכל ליהנות מהאווירה הזאת וזה ממש מחמם את הלב לראות את הציבור הדחוס שיושב פה ממדינות הים כאשר במקביל באותו זמן עשרות חוקרים יושבים בחדרים האחרים ועוסקים במלאכתם וקבוצה של 120 סטודנטים מאוניברסיטה אחרת בארץ מבקרת עכשיו במסדרונות הספרייה הלאומית והעסק פה הוא חי ותוסף בצורה רב גונית ועל כך גאוותנו. והערה שלישית, אביעד, התרגום כבר בסדר? הדבר המעניין הוא שאני לא רואה הרבה שמשתמשים בזה. זאת אומרת, אני רואה שמרביתם מבינים את השפה. וההערה השלישית, אני רוצה בשמנו ובעצם בשם כולם להודות לדוקטור אביעד סטולמן על היוזמה המאוד מאוד ברוכה הזאת, מאוד חשובה הזאת. אני מקווה שהיא חשובה, היא בוודאי חשובה לנו. אני מקווה שכולנו נהנה ממנה, ובאמת, אביעד, תודה רבה לך. ועכשיו לדברים שרציתי לומר לכם. ברוכים הבאים לכנס הבינלאומי הראשון של אוצרי יהדות. כנס זה, המציין 120 שנה לספרייה הלאומית של מדינת ישראל, ומתקיים בירושלים בירתה, מפגיש אוצי, אוצרים מומחי תוכן, ארכיונאים ומנהלים מ-20 מדינות. תפקידם של האוצרים, ועל זה עמד אביעד קודם, לתעד, לשמר, להנחיל את מורשת העם היהודי ותרבותו. אנו מקווים שבמהלך הכנס נוכל לחשוב ביחד על הדרכים ליצור שיתופי פעולה חדשים לחזק את שיתופי הפעולה הקיימים ולבחון כיצד נוכל יחדיו לשכלל את ההישגים לתועלת החברה האנושית בכלל. ספרנים רבים חשים כי מדיניות איסוף היא חיונית. אחרים חולקים על כך ומאמינים שניתן לנהל ספרייה טובה גם בלי להגדיר את מדיניות האיסוף המפורטת. בין אם אתם שייכים לסיעה הראשונה ובין אם אתם שייכים לסיעה השנייה 
אתם ודאי מודעים לכך שלא די במדיניות איסוף. ספרייה זקוקה לטקטיקות איסוף שונות. כיצד אנחנו יכולים להשיג את הספרים הללו? איך ניתן להשיג את חומרי האפמרה? כיצד עלינו לקצור את אתרי האינטרנט וכולי. הספרייה הראשונה שידוע שהשכילה לאסוף אוסף רציני של ספרים שמקורם מעבר לגבולות המדינה הייתה כמובן כידוע לכולם הספרייה באלכסנדריה. האוצרים של ספרייה זו ניסו לאסוף את כלל הידע העולמי על ידי שליחת משלחות לירידי ספרים ברודוס ובאתונה ובמקומות אחרים, אבל בעיקר על ידי העתקת ספרים שהגיעו בכל ספינה שעגנה בנמל, הספרנים העתיקו את כתבי היד המקוריים ולאחר מכן שלחו את העותקים המקוריים לבעליהם. בישראל, כמו בספריות לאומיות אחרות, קיים חוק, חוק ספרים אשר מעשיר את הספרייה הלאומית מדי שנה באלפי ספרים ופרסומים אחרים. זוהי אחת מאסטרטגיות, מאסטרטגיות האיסוף המאפשרות לנו להשאיר את האוספים שלנו לשרת טוב יותר את הלקוחות שלנו בהווה ובעתיד. אבל אין די באמצעים כאלה. באופן טבעי אם אינך יודע על קיומו של ספר מסוים בוודאי לא תנסה להשיג אותו. ספריות רבות מעסיקות ביבלוגרפים בספרייה שלנו הם מכונים בוחרים או מומחי תוכן שמתפקידם לאתר אילו ספרים יש לאסוף ולכלול באוסף. כמו ספריות מודרניות אחרות גם אנחנו, גם אנחנו עוברים לשיטה אוטומטית יותר שבה אנו נעזרים בשיטת הפרופילים בהם אגרגטורים מספקים ספרים על פי פרופילים מדויקים. כולנו יודעים כי בדרך כלל לא מסובך להשיג ספר מודפס חדש. אני כמובן מדבר מונחים יחסיים. אני מודע למשאבים העצומים שהספרייה שלנו, ולא רק שלנו, מקדישים על מנת לרכוש פיזית או דיגיטלית כל ספר שניתן להעלות על הדעת, שאנחנו מרגישים שהוא צריך להיות כלול באוסף שלנו. ספריות, ובידי נכון הדבר לגבי ספריות לאומיות, אוספות הרבה מאוד ספרים ליתר ביטחון. אנו אוספים ספרים רבים שמעטם, שמעטים אי פעם ישתמשו בהם. אנו עושים זאת כי אנחנו מרגישים שזה מה שעושה את האוסף שלנו משמעותי באמת. איננו רואים את עצמנו כספרייה ציבורית גרידה המשרתת את, הצ... את הצרכים היומיומיים של הלקוחות שלנו. לכן אנו רוכשים כל ספר מתאים מפני שאנו מאמינים שיום אחד אולי בעוד מאה שנה אולי מישהו ישתמש בו. זה מה שהופך את האוסף שלנו לאוצר מורשת לאומית. זה מה שהופך את האוסף שלנו, שלנו לאבן שואבת לדורות של משתמשים. ואכן, כאשר רוב האנשים חושבים על הספרייה, הם מדמיינים אולמות קריאה מלאים בספרים מודפסים וכרוכים. כאשר, כאשר הספרייה הלאומית הוקמה בדיוק לפני מאה עשרים שנה, היא התמקדה באיסוף ספרים. יותר מאוחר החלו העוצרים לאסוף כתבי יד וכעבור עשרות שנים אף החלו לאסוף ארכיונים אישיים וכתבי יד. מאוחר יותר הפכה הספרייה לביתו של עוזף המוזיקה החשוב בעולם בתחומו ארכיון הצליל הלאומי. כעבור שנים נוספות הוסיפו לאוסף את חומרי האפמרה והמפות, תמונות וכמובן החומר שנולד דיגיטלית. כולנו מבינים כי להשיג חומר כה מבוגן, מגוון בפורמטים כה רבים אינו דבר פשוט. אולם כבר הפנמנו כי אין כל דרך אחרת לנהל אוסף. ספריות וספריות לאומיות במיוחד מחויבות לספר סיפור מורכב ורב ממדי של הלאום שלהם. ספרים מודפסים מספקים ממד אחד של הסיפור הלאומי. קיים צורך ממשי לספר את הסיפור מזוויות אחרות על ידי שימוש בפורמטים נוספים כגון אפמרה, כתבי יד וחומר ארכיוני. 
פורמטים אלה משכללים את האופן, את האופן שבו מתוארת התרבות שאותה אנו מבקשים לשמר. מי שמתבונן <coughs> בעולם הנוכחי של הספרנות מבין כי חשיבותם היחסית של הספרים המודפסים הרגילים נמצאת בירידה מתמדת. ישנם גורמים שונים שתרמו לתופעה הזו. ראשית, פורמטים חדשים שנוספו בעיקר דיגיטליים שינו את עולם המידע העכשווי. ספרים כבר אינם משאב החשוב ביותר לקבלת מידע. שנית, ההתקדמות הטכנולוגית בתחום הדפוס וביכולת לשלוח פריט ממקום אחד בעולם למשנהו שינו ללא הכר את היכולת להפיץ ספרים. כיום ספרים מודפסים הם יותר זמינים ויותר נגישים וכמובן הבה לא נשכח את המהפכה שחוללה גוגל. בתוך פחות מעשור דומה כי ככל שהמידע המצוי בתוך הספרים המודפסים הופך נפוץ יותר חשיבותם של הספרים הרגילים באוספים הלאומיים פוחתת. ייתכן שחלקנו יהיה נבוך, אבל האמת היא שרוב האנשים לא מחפשים מידע, מידע אמין דווקא בספרים. מידע, מידע זמין בחינם נגיש באינטרנט והלקוחות שלנו משתמשים בו כל הזמן. הרכישה של ספרים אלקטרונים הפכה להיות מיידית והמציאות היא שהלקוחות שלנו מסוגלים לקרוא את הספרים הרבה לפני שנוכל להפור אותם לזמינים בספרייה. אם אני צודק בחלק מן ההנחות שהעליתי בפניכם ואם הספרים המודפסים אינם חיוניים באותה מידה כמו שהיו לפנים הרי המסקנה היא שמשקלם של אוספים מיוחדים עולה וימשיך לעלות בהתמדה בשנים הקרובות. כתב ידו של ניוטון, כתב ידו של הרמב״ם או אחת הטיוטות של שי עגנון ימשיכו למשוך קהל מרובה. הפריטים המיוחדים לעולם לא יאבדו מחשיבותם הלאומית והרגשית. חשיבותם של פריטים אלה נובעת לא רק מן האנרגיה הרגשית ש... שהם עוצרים בתוכם, אלא בעיקר בשל ייחודיותם. בעוד שספרים ועיתונים מצויים בעותקים רבים לכתבי היד לעולם לא יהיה תחליף. כתבי יד, חומרי האפמרה, תצלומים, עוצרי מידע חשובים ביותר שמוסיף ממד משמעותי לסיפור שאנו מנחילים לדורות הבאים. חומרים אלה יש בכוחם לעורר משיכה רגשית משמעותית. <coughs> אני מאמין ביוזמות דיגיטליות. למעשה הספרייה הלאומית של ישראל מאמינה כי זהו המפתח להצלחה שלנו במאה ה-21. בשנים הקרובות נקים ספרייה לאומית דיגיטלית משמעותית שתשכפל חלק ניכר מתוך האוצרות שלנו. אבל הספרייה הלאומית מחזירה, מחזיקה רק מקטע מסוים של הפריטים הייחודיים הרלוונטיים המפוזרים בכל רחבי העולם. אם ניקח כדוגמה את כתבי היד העבריים, ניווכח כי הספרייה הלאומית של ישראל מחזיקה בפחות מעשרה אחוז מכל כתבי היד הידועים. למרות שאנחנו אחת הספריות המובילות בעולם בתחום של יודאיקה אין די באוצרות שלנו על מנת לספר את הסיפור היהודי כולו. מבחינה היסטורית כוחנו הייתה ביצירת האפשרות פריסת המצע להקמתה של, הספר... של ספרייה בינלאומית של כתבי יד עבריים בירושלים. המכון לתצלומי כתבי יד עבריים מיסודו של דוד בן גוריון או בעצם ב... מיוזמתו של דוד בן גוריון ראש הממשלה דאז שראה בחזונו את, את הפוטנציאל העצום כבר בשנת 1950, מחזיקה קרוב, כעת קרוב ל-75 אלף כתבי יד עבריים מ-1200 מוסדות בעולם. קטלוג כל כתבי היד והסיוע הממשלתי שניתן למוסדות אחרים במשך השנים היה הישג חשוב ביותר 
וכמובן היכולת שלנו לאפשר לחוקרים מכל רחבי העולם גישה לכתבי היד הללו ממלאת אותנו גאווה. בשל התקדמות הטכנולוגיה, במיוחד בתחום של הדמיה דיגיטלית וכמובן ההמצאה של האינטרנט, מה שהיה נכון ב-1950 נכון שבעתיים היום. המפתח עבור כל יוזמה הכוללת אוספים מיוחדים הוא שיתוף פעולה בין המוסדות. המפתח להצלחה של כל ספרייה או ארכיון מודרני היא ההבנה שישנו צורך בשיתוף המשאבים והאוצרות. ללא היכולת לעבוד יחד למען המשתמשים המשותפים שלנו בהווה ובעתיד, הספריות תהפוכנה להיות בלתי רלוונטיות ומיושנות. כאן, בספרייה הלאומית, אנו, אנו מחויבים ליצירת שיתופי פעולה בינלאומיים התורמים גישה מהפכנית לעולם היודאיקה והשימור שלה עבור הדורות הבאים. אני מקווה שכנס זה יסייע בקידום שיתופי פעולה כאלה. אני מזמין אתכם ליהנות מהפגישות, כמו גם מהפעילויות הנוספות שארגנו. הצבנו תוכנית שמטרתה להרחיב את ההזדמנויות, להכיר חברים חדשים ולחזק את הקשרים בין המוסדות השונים. פתיחת האוצרות העשירים של כולנו לכלל הציבור היא המשימה שעומדת לפני עינינו והדרך היא ביצירת רשת משגשגת של, שיתופ... של שיתופי פעולה בינינו לבין עצמנו. אני מקווה שהכנס אכן יהיה פורה ומועיל לכולנו. תודה שבאתם. Um, I will speak a little bit about uh, the renewal process of the National Library of Israel and some of the ideas that we have been working on during the last few years. Uh, I think that we are in exciting times. Uh, it's exciting times usually for us, but we have to remember that it's also exciting for the people that we serve, uh, our clients, uh, that they can find Well, we hope that they can find whatever they search for uh, and they can enjoy what we create for them. Uh, and this is the reason why we are working, because we need to, uh, to give them what they are looking for. Uh, and the, exciting, the excitement is because we tend to succeed sometimes. Um, I will speak a little bit about the history of the National Library. Uh, for those that are newcomers to, uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, National Library of Israel was founded in 1892 uh, as a world center for the preservation of books relating to Jewish thoughts and culture. In 1925, it assumed the additional functions of a general university library. Um, as most of you know, it was part of the Hebrew University. Since 1960, The library has been situated in its current location uh, on Givat Ram campus of the Hebrew University. As a result of the recommendation of the International Advisory Committee uh, convened in 1998 in the conclusion of the Zamir Committee for changing the status of the National Library published in 2004, the Israeli Knesset enacted the National Library Law uh, in 2007. The law granted the National Library independent legal status as of January 1st, 2011. So we are an old institution with long history, but we are actually a newborn uh, baby, and we try to um, uh, integrate both old and new in that sense. Uh, it gave the, the law gave the National Library the responsibility for documenting the diverse cultural material production taking place in Israel and throughout the Jewish world. And this is, well, when I heard Caroline uh, talk, I was thinking about similarities because as Britain ruled the world before uh, and got all those wonderful things uh, documented around the globe, we have also a dual mission that uh, we're, only, we're not only looking at the geographical sphere of Israel, but we are also looking at the, uh, the whole world where Jewish uh, life were uh, created, were preserved, uh, where culture, Jewish culture was created, and we would like to see everything 
uh, integrated together today with the um, digital possibilities that we have. Uh, the government uh, has allocated a permanent location in Jerusalem adjoining the, uh, the Knesset for the National Library New State of the Art facility to be completed by 2016, which I will discuss in more detail later uh, for, um, in my presentation. The National Library developed a comprehensive master plan uh, for renewal in the framework of which the library is harnessing digital technology to provide open access to the collections, promoting research and scholarly collaboration, and establishing the National Library as a center for cultural and educational activity. The National Library also introduced a new organizational structure, which I will explain more um, concretely as I proceed. The mission of the renewal, renewed uh, NLI, as established by law in 2007, is to collect, preserve, cultivate, and endow treasures of knowledge, heritage, and culture, with an emphasis on the land of Israel, pre-state, the state of Israel, and the Jewish people. The central facets of the renewal program entail the building of a new facility and implementing the comprehensive uh, master plan with digital technologies and open access at its core. The master plan also established processes for preserving and increasing the vast collections of books, manuscripts, archives, and unique treasures NLI holds. The NLI will, in addition, continue to retain its status as a central research library in the humanities for the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, but it also serves as the largest and we hope to be a good in the sense of a, a promoting research in Israel at large. And we also have a very good collection globally in some areas that uh, brings researchers in general humanities and uh, to Jerusalem to sit and work here. So we are not only focusing on what we think is the strength of the collection, but we would like also to help research in humanities at large. The NLI is designated to become uh, the country's flagship of the state-of-the-art information technology, offering open democratic access to the vast world of physical and digital resources and tools, not only those based on the NLI's own holdings, but also on resources available through partnership with other knowledge and memory institution. We are not an island that stands alone. We think that all of you are small, let's say, uh, stars around us, and we think that we should try and make it one uh, global community, that this is one of the reasons that you are all here, to start and see how we can do that together. Uh, the NLI uh, intends to play a central role in shaping the national cultural agenda and to serve as a hub for creative and intellectual productivity across a range of discipline reflected in uh, our collection and spectrum of formats. Uh, the National Library of Israel has set high goals. Uh, they are outlined in the master plan that we have created. However, we strongly believe that these goals are realistic and achievable. Our success will depend on our own effort together with the essential cooperation of other institutions managing, managing Judaica collection in Israel and throughout the world. In the coming years, we'll, we will create 40 million digital objects that we anticipate that will bring about 10 million uh, annual hits to our website. The new building, which will be ready by 2016, will accommodate half a million visitors each year. In the words of the International Committee that investigated the old National Library, if this is to happen, the library must modernize itself. It must open its collections more widely and efficiently to scholars and to the community at large. It must offer the public the services only this library can truly supply and create a working environment suited to the place within the world of learning, the state of Israel and modern Jewish civilization. We believe that we can deliver all of the above with the help, of course, of you, our colleagues and partners. As of January 2011, we pursuant to the National Library Law enacted by the Knesset in 2007, NLI has been established as an independent legal entity in the form of a charitable company, a company that operates for the public good and assets and incomes of which is to be used only for the public purposes. NLI is owned today jointly by the state, 
50%, Hebrew University 25%, and the other uh, is various other public bodies. NLI is governed by a 15 members board of directors shared by David Bloomberg and comprised of high profile public figures, senior Israeli academics, and leading professionals from the fields of information and library sciences, law, and technology. The NLI General Assembly, the establishment of what of which was completed in January 2011, is an oversight institution charged with ensuring the professional and independent management of NLI without government intervention. intervention. The 14 members of the General Assembly are led by the President of the Israeli Academy of Science and Humanities. It's mandated by law and are responsible for electing the members of the Board of dire uh, Directors. I would I expanded in uh, this structure in order to uh, give you the background of a new entity that is not very similar to many other national library that usually governed by the government. This is a, a special creature that was created in order to give independent for this library and to give the flexibility uh, for the library to create what is planned to be a, a major cultural uh, organization in Israel and abroad. And uh, the, the structure that the law uh, provided enabled us to work really independent in terms of collection policy, in terms of digitization strategy or given access strategy, and to provide good service to um, the broader public as possible. An LI staff of um, 170 positions is divided into six division according to function and contents. I'm saying that the number, because it's not a large institution. It's a very small institution if you compare it to the uh, goals that we have set. Uh, and, but we are trying our best to do what we are supposed to do in that sense. Um, Analyze teams encompassing both veteran library staff as well as employees recruited in the past several years as part of the renewal process, include, including experts from the fields of library science, information, technology, context disciplines, law, administration, and finance. We had to actually recreate all the organization uh, from, from the start as we were part of the Hebrew University and have to build all the administration of a new uh, library. Uh, and this is, wasn't an easy task in, if, to do this and to also start planning the new building. Um, a few words on the collection policy because you will hear a lot of that later. Uh, analyze core areas of special, specialization, Intel, Judaica, Israel, and Islam in Middle East. In addition, the National Library contains a general humanity collection. Each collection contains a wide area of formats, manuscripts, per, uh, press, uh, images, archive, audio, video, and today more and more, of course, digital uh, objects. The NLI curators and content experts well versed in all type of physical and digital content they analyze current holding and the inventory of private and public collections in their fields have shaped a collection policy for all formats and continually increase and develop the collections through acquisitions, gifts, or interlibrary cooperation. Our curatorial team and their staff works to generate contact with other scholars and cultivate the collections driven by user needs. Special attention is being devoted to developing new areas while maintaining NLI strengths, uh, strongest assets. Decisions on policy will consider the needs for the research world and other target audiences, the ability to collaborate and receive digital access to materials stored elsewhere, achieving an app appropriate balance between physical and electronic items and the LNI budget for acquisition and the absorptions, maintenance, preservation, and service. In its uh, conclusions, the Committee for the Changing of the Status of the National Library wrote, the library must modernize itself. It must open its collection more widely and efficiently to scholars and the community at large. And this is the biggest challenge. How we are going to turn, sorry, how we are going to be changing from a research library uh, to a library that serves the broadest public as, as we can. Uh, but, and not forget the researcher's role. And we have to keep in mind that the new users are now in the educational system, so we have another target audience that's working with students, with pupils and schools, 
and they create them as the next target audiences. Much of the analyzed rich material has been hidden from the general public for too long. In order to accomplish the above goal, we must first and foremost document all the collections. That is, catalog and record of all of the analyzed collection material. This will entail making all previous documentation computerized and accessible online. In the coming years, we will invest significant resources to bring this about. Karen, as well as you, uh, we don't know how many items we have. <laughs> and we have a smaller library. But we plan to finish that until 2016 while we move to the new building and to have everything computerized, uh, all the metadata recorded, so it can serve for the future in a, is a digitization project or usage uh, from different aspects. The computerized uh, documentation of analyzed collection will allow the experienced users to conduct advanced searches, thus improving their research capabilities and fostering new cultural discoveries. The community at large will benefit from treasures that have been long uns been unseen. Advanced search engines and thematic websites will enable all users to find the most interesting and relevant content. The NLI serves as the national repository of the Jewish heritage and also that of the diverse spectrum of communities that compromise uh, Israel's landscape, Jews, Muslims, Christian Jews, Baha'is, and myriad ethnic and immigrant groups. NLI therefore has a critical cultural and educational role to play to foster awareness of each community and to preserve and make accessible their cultural treasures. The NLI operates a national culture and education center promoting first-hand engagement with the cultural heritage of Israel and of the Jewish people, and impacting Israel's cultural agenda. The full range of programs launched in the current building and later expanded in the new NLI facility encompass exhibitions, musical programs, lectures, seminars, and online interactive content activities for students and adults. NLI is also developing initiatives to move beyond its traditional academic audiences to serve literary community, writers and publishers by designing programs uh, and an environment that will attract aspiring writers to see NLI as a home in which they can work and be inspired by the content of NLI collections. Throughout this vibrant culture center, the NLI will diversify its traditional user community and bring many of, uh, of the items here to life to current and future generations. We, see, we think, we believe that bringing uh, writers, creators here in the library to work together with researchers can create new uh, uh, literature, can create new music, and the work together is the, uh, one of the success ingredients to use this, those collections and to create new collections that will eventually come back here. The NLI will also uh, present a roster of educational activities, both actual and uh, virtual, that includes visiting the library, a platform for online activities and exhibitions, and create technology tools and applications that reach into the classroom and home. As an integral part of its role in enriching educational programs for pupils, teachers, and administrators, the NLI will participate in the development of curricula integrating primary sources from the analyzed collection and other collections. As the basis for many of these initiatives, we are developing a primary source database that incorporates content relevant for specific scholastic disciplines and for widespread access and use. The NLI is parten partnering <coughs> with the Ministry of Education in Israel in the large-scale project to computerize educational curricula and will engage additionally, additional joint program, projects with ministries of education and culture, museums, and cultural and heritage institutions throughout the country and international. We believe that by uh, uh, providing the, those primary sources on our site, we can engage also with educational pro programs in the Jewish world at large, uh, taking the materials that we have here and make them usable elsewhere. A few words about the digital library. NLI, like most of you, has invested <coughs> tremendous resources in adapting to the digital revolution that has reframed the world of reading and research. We're in the process of completing NLI's comprehensive digital strategy. 
with the parallel goals of expanding and diversifying uh, uh, target audiences, prioritizing the creation of Hebrew language <coughs> digital content on Judaica in Israel, and organizing digital content according to the topic as well as format. A crucial part of this program is engaging in digital collaboration with institutions and organizations in Israel and worldwide, some of which we have already started and many that are in the planning stages. Some of the projects already underway or completed included the digitization last year of collection of 20,000 Pashkvils. Most of you know what is Pashkvilim. Those are posters in the ultra-orthodox community and it's available online. The broad, uh, broadsheets from the ultra-orthodox community, the digitization of 30,000 hours of Jewish and Hebrew music, including the National Sound Archive, some of which is open already to users on a designated website, and planned digitization of, of archives contain, containing collections of music score. The Newton Papers, in conjunction with the University of Sussex and the Central Database of Digitized Hebrew Manuscripts for Institutions and Individuals Throughout the World. NLI Digital Initiative entails the development of a comprehensive and extensive technological infrastructure expansion of its technology staff and integration of information technology in all aspects of its operation. NLI's digital strategy will determine, prioritize, and digitization of our holdings and acquisition of born digital material. NLI is putting advanced discovery and display tools into operation as well as interactive content tools that enable users to upload content. As we finalize and formulation of our digital strategy, we guided, we guided the needs uh, and interest of our target audiences, researchers and degree students, the general public and educational systems. We're not so, uh, forgetting that we serve the public, prioritizing user access and services is the core of NLI's a vision and renewal plan, both its premise, in its premises and in the cyberspace. NLI will int intend to serve a constantly growing audiences of users within the general public and scholarly community in Israel and the world. The key principles uh, the NLI enhanced access program involves the following, focusing on users, decisions on content selection, digitization formats, content delivery mechanism and their potential are informed by an in-depth understanding of user groups and their needs. We are now uh, working on, uh, uh, on our strategy and we're using, uh, uh, we're doing research or we're starting doing research on user communities and their needs by working with focus groups and doing a large scale uh, internet uh, survey in Israel to understand what cultural heritage interested, uh, interests the broad public how they're going to use it, how they're going to engage it. We would like to avoid mistakes uh, by investing a lot of energy uh, to do a digitization project that doesn't serve anyone. Uh, we need to know that all the materials that we are going to digitize is going to be used. And uh, by meaning use is used cleverly and not just uh, having that on their inter internet site. Forging partnership. The second uh, uh, thing that we would like to do is NLI works to mobilize and create significant, significant partnership in providing comprehensive digital access to collections held by other institutions. Um, most of, of you here probably have been in contact with us during the last years and probably in the past, even in the far past. Uh, we hope to strengthen those cooperation. We need to do that, and this is uh, something that we cannot do. Uh, we cannot do all the tasks that we we, sh we discussed uh, alone. And uh, uh, as as we proceed, as we advance, uh, we think that uh, again, it's not enough that we digitize together collections. Is developing platforms of tools. Uh, to help either researchers or the broad public or the educational system here and Jewish uh, pupils around the world to use the material cleverly. Those are hard tasks. Uh, overcoming obstacles to access is not only legal and money, uh, it's all, and it's also a translation, cultural differences, 
uh, making the, the material available in, uh, to different uh, communities around the globe. Uh, we have been working on the, digitizing the uh, entire sound archives. And we have quite good metadata on, the, on music. Uh, at the beginning, we believed that, uh, well, music is a universal language. It's, it's enough that we put it. But uh, what we can say to uh, uh, people that speak English, sit in, well, Cincinnati, and would like to listen to music, but they can't find it because the metadata is in Hebrew, and they don't know Hebrew. They might as enjoy the music, but they have to find it. And uh, this means that we have to uh, create English metadata for 30,000 hours of music, uh, and to uh, and do it analytically, so they can find different songs. And then if you're talking about newspaper projects that you want to we put on one platform, uh, today we have 26 titles from in different languages, Hebrew newspapers, and we want to, it's on one platform, you can search it, uh, but uh, if you want to give added value, you have to use automatic translation tools, so people can search it, get one day, and uh, one use from different places. So those are part of the challenges. Digital and physical preservation, of course, they are all known to you. Uh, we, we believe that processes, activities, management of digital information over time to ensure the long-term ex uh, accessibility is the hardest problem that we face right now. It's not only to collect uh, the next writers that are working on their personal computers, but how to make their uh, sustainability and accessibility for the long term. The goal of the digital preservation is to preserve material resulting from digital for reformatting. That is digitization and information that is beyond digitally with no analog counterpart. Because of the relative short life cycle of digital information, preservation is an ongoing and expensive process. Um, we are planning to uh, make the decision on the next, uh, on the digital preservation system that we are going to acquire for the National Library during the next few months. And uh, while well, this is an announcement that I would like to make, that we would offer a digital preservation service for all those the, you that are sitting here on Jewish uh, content around the world. We believe that there are a lot of small places that have unique material that already got it digitized and but have no uh, ability to secure the long-term sustainability of those digital contents. So we would like to offer the National Library as a safe haven for those material for the long run. It doesn't, of course, affect any of the access, uh, access policies that each institution would have, but we would like, after we finish implementation of the, of the system that we will select, to work with you to ensure uh, the material to be used uh, for future generation. Um, internet archiving is also a problematic, uh, a big problem for us. We are planning this year to start harvesting the entire Israeli domain, but we're also looking at uh, important Jewish websites around the world to harvest them and to keep them. We don't, tell, well, Aviat tells me, because it's not my uh, area, uh, that there are so many important blogs in Judaica today that uh, actually are much better sources or updated sources than the written literature that uh, is published today. And uh, we cannot uh, allow that those mat this material will go away. Uh, in Israel, we have the problem that the first 10 years of the Israeli internet have been lost in a way. Many of the material have been uh, sites were gone down and there is no uh, place to recover them. So we are getting into it and we hope to, to start this this year. Uh, a few words about the new building. The National Library of Israel Comprehensive Renewal Plan provides for its establishment of a new facility slated for comp completion in 2016. The new building will encompass some of 40,000 square meters and stand as a national landmark amid the urban envelope that constitutes the national district, Kriyat Leom, adjacent to the Knesset, the Israel Museum, and the Hebrew University. It's only a small steps for here, from here, but it's a major, major change going out of a university environment to be part of an area that belongs to the public at large. Uh, the National Library's new physical venue is crucial 
to the vibrant cultural role of the library will play in the anticipated half a million on-site and millions of virtual visitors annually. NLI is conducting an international architectural competition currently in process, which will conclude with the selection of leading architectural firm in October 2012. The design brief provided to the participant architects calls for a facility that meets the demands of a dynamic area requiring functional and flexible internal spaces that can be adapted to rapidly shifting needs. The new building to be constructed according to international standards of sustainability and environmental sensitivity is intended to serve the NLI for decades to come. Well, I can only guess that those that built this building in 1960 said the same, so <laughs> we can only anticipate for 50 years. That's enough. Uh, the excitement surrounding this project resulted uh, in the submission uh, of 81 proposal in the first stage of the competition. The international panel of judges comprised of four architects, international architects uh, and Israeli ones, selected four proposals from among the numerous submissions. The panel of judges noted that it was impressed by the range of participants' ideas and their creativity, and happy to say it from what I saw, is they also understood what we wanted them to. Uh, and it's a big challenge for architects to understand the clients. Uh, in round two of the competition, which will be slated to begin uh, this month, up to 12 architects to participate, the four selected in round one, together with as many as eight architects, up to four Israelis and up to four, in, uh, sorry, eight Israelis and four international were direct, directly invited to participate in round two. Round two will conclude in October 2012, and if we want to look further, we have planned to go to detailed planning at the end of this year. It will last a year, and then go to start working up to 2016. We hope to have the building finished. The last thing that I want to say is a little bit about cooperation and openness. Uh, in recognition of the importance of collaboration relationship to maximize knowledge sharing and access to information, NLI works to establish receptor agreements with local and international libraries and other cultural, educational, and heritage institutions, as well as with IT companies. Throughout this partnership, NLI works to significantly and consistently increase the scope of material accessible to users and to enrich the educational and cultural activities of NLI. NLI cooperative initiatives include our Jewish historical press websites development in conjunction with Tel Aviv University, and many of you contributed in the past material and content to this project. Um, we are, now, we are now hoping to add more uh, American uh, newspapers, Jewish American newspapers, to this project uh, with the help of uh, uh, Yale, NYU, and NYPL. Uh, sorry? Columbia. And Columbia as well, yeah. The, we are hoping to get material that was unavailable to many of the, well, for us, but also to many other institutions. Uh, the problem is, of course, with the unique uh, uh, material that is not available elsewhere. We have good collections here, but we are missing a lot. And uh, unfortunately, uh, some of the uh, American newspapers were on, already been digitized by commercial companies that now uh, close access only to uh, institutions that pay for that. Um, NLI also partners partners with UCLA to digitize and make accessible Israeli ephemera in all of its forms, working with institutions uh, uh, across the globe, including many of you here uh, with us to centralize a digitized database of Hebrew manuscripts and a leading project sponsored by the Jewish Heritage Project of the Prime Ministry Office to Rescue, preserve and make accessible a spectrum of cultural and historical archives in Israel and to build the network sets, the standards for preservation and access activities. Well, we hope that uh, to build a discussion started at this conference to advance intellectual and artistic collaboration and exchange, but I think that uh, actually the, uh, the success of this conference, and I must say that uh, a conference that was a year ago in the center uh, uh, in, the, in Jewish history in New York, uh, 
are uh, landmarks in the way that we need to um, work more closely and to uh, discuss the, not only in a conference, but uh, on a daily basis, how to make all the treasures available. Um, I think that the success of this project is, uh, of this conference is to have the next conference in two, uh, in two years from now, and that's what we plan to do. And then we can start talking about all the projects that have uh, uh, created through this, uh, se those sessions that we had today. Otherwise, uh, we, at least our, uh, from the National Library of Israel point of view, we missed the point. Uh, we, we will work uh, after the conference, and that's uh, something that we, we promise to do, to see the, how we can uh, document the talks that we had uh, between you during the sessions and the um, uh, informal sessions uh, and to see how we can uh, see that growing up uh, to, be, to be results. Uh, Aviad has a big task in that because, uh, but I, I urge you all to, to help in that. Uh, I, I, when I planned uh, uh, the presentation, I, I was thinking at first to, to have 12 images of the 12 tribes. Uh, and uh, to see that the end, we're all starting to put them together. Um, so this is a mission for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to go back to a point Carol made and, and tie it to this uh, cooperation and openness slide at the end. She made the point that um, when project, when curators uh, of institutions are asked or encouraged to take on cooperative projects, uh, they asked their library directors, does that mean I get to focus on that and put my day job aside? And um, while well, I think all of us would want to be involved in, in, in visualizing and implementing and working together, I wonder um, if there's any consideration for kind of an office of digital cooperation. In other words, that rather than it be built into and assume that we all somehow can build into our own workflows, the infrastructure for doing this, that there would be created at the National Library for this Judaica cooperation some formal um, mechanism of staff support and coordination that would, you know, it, it wouldn't be the third or fourth thing on my calendar, but it would be the first thing of many first things on that office's calendar uh, that would connect me with Avia, with Ido and other, uh, with Hezi and other people. So I just wonder if, the formalization of cooperation through an actual misra, uh, as it were, would be uh, something that you would consider? Well, I think that uh, I would be very hesitant to do something like that, not because of the resources needed to that. Uh, yesterday we announced that we will support Judaica Europeana by giving a position to coordinate the technology uh, and the ingesting process <coughs> that needed from different partners uh, putting material in Europeana. But I think that working with partners requires us to be very sensitive in building something that we will say, well, we are leading, we are having a formal office to do that. Uh, every institution has its uniqueness, has its own place, <coughs> and we rather do that very slowly uh, uh, and very sensitive with our partners and not to come and create something that, well, this is a formal place that unified everything together. It's, again, if, the, if we see the need for it, we will create it. But rather we, we, well, I believe that creating networks needs partners and not some formalized uh, organizational structure. <coughs> If I just follow stage. up real quick, I didn't, and forgive me, I didn't mean to suggest a kind of a governance structure that would dictate to partners how projects would continue. I meant, you know, cooperation, a facilitating structure that, that we, I don't have a secretary, I don't have someone to make photocopies for me, I do all of my, you know, I sharpen my own pencils at the University of Pennsylvania. So, so I mean, and I'm not asking you to provide me with the secretary, but I mean that in once a once a project is formalized, it 
there's not in place a grant which has a project director, or even if there is a project director for a joint operation, there still is a useful, might be a useful way of coordinating in the cooperation, not governing and dictating cooperation. I understand. We, we will consider that. I, I can only say that, uh, um, is that we, have this, we are in the same similar position sometimes. Well, we have, we have uh, right now three or four digital projects managers uh, doing different stuff, but the next phase for their work is to uh, propose new ideas and to work on new projects. And when you're doing both, it's very hard. So we are thinking about maybe putting a, a, like a, a business uh, a planner model, a plan model that will work, a position that will work on the future project and not uh, integrate with the current work. So it might be the solution also to what you're asking for. Could you, could you please say your name and institution so everybody can... Silvia Hansman from Vivo, Buenos Aires. Uh, I want to ask you about um, uh, transliteration issues uh, because there are several standards for starting and then there are so many different, I've seen already different implementations of the same standards uh, and uh, also there is a uh, different standards for Yiddish and Hebrew. Could you uh, talk a little bit about that and tell us uh, how you are planning to work? Okay, I'm looking for a new book. Somebody help. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I will ask Yanid Levy, is the head of the library processing unit, uh, to okay. give an answer on that later. Uh, but I can give you my my uh, decision. I think the transliteration is something that uh, is not needed anymore. Okay. When you have automatic translation tools and they are developing very fast, you can use them in the, in the future. Um, David Gilner, Hebrew Union College. This is a follow-up on Arthur's. Um, for the last, at least the last decade, I have been under um, pressure from uh, my superiors to um, uh, monetize uh, resource. And it's a private institution. Um, and um, uh, in one case, um, uh, someone came by and made a, uh, a pitiful offer that was accepted um, because of such pressure. Um, uh, so that in terms of this office, uh, this office uh, uh, is not just uh, for the good of the user. It is, um, how shall I say, institutional protexia for some of us who can say, um, is it really worth this uh, uh, handful of, uh, I wish it was silver, um, uh, uh, <laughs> copper to uh, um, participate. Uh, um, and uh, when we have uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, mixed metaphor, light on the hill uh, 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 of the National Library, uh, that we we're really, uh, in a sense, owe a certain allegiance to. So balancing the idea of this uh, cooperation is a real sense that the National Library, once it becomes the National Library for the Jewish people, it, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, helps deflect this type of pressure. Somebody want to react to that? So, okay. uh, I, I, again, I'm very hesitant to say that we will lead. Okay, and the National Library will be the, the place to have everything. We, we are very, uh, we believe that each institution has its own value, and the pressures that you are uh, experiencing, very understandable. Uh, we, we think that we should find the balance that you're looking for is by, um, is by giving, a, well, let's say the strengths of the cooperation to each institution. Uh, branding of an institution comes also with the outcomes of digital uh, exposure or digital content exposed to uh, large audiences that know that the material came from a, a, a UC or a Yeshiva or whichever institution and from the National Library. 
So what we propose, that this is, of course, the National Library will facilitate those kind of cooperation, but it's not going to be the National Library network. It's going to be all of us together networking. And I know that this is something that has to be worked out and has to be uh, uh, given a lot of thoughts how to do that. Um, but I, I don't believe that there are any other options in, in the Google age uh, to do that. And those that are willing to come and work together will benefit. Those that will, will all, uh, stay a little bit behind, they will join later. So I, I'm not sure if I uh, answered your question and day-to-day day -day operation, but you want to, uh, David? Well, it's not, everyone wants their material branded. This, this is not, and this was certainly true in the print age. It's true in the digital age. Um, uh, this, uh, and there's information that can be shared where um, a simple thank you. So for example, if you were interested and I sent you our song index, uh, because it had information about Jewish songs and Roman information, a simple thank you someplace uh, is sufficient branding. Um, on the other hand, uh, what I was uh, um, trying to uh, suggest uh, uh, following up on Arthur was if um, there was a, an office, um, and in the digital age, an office is uh, simply a URL, uh, where we could point that this was the place for uh, uh, cooperation, that, uh, that uh, um, thoughts about uh, uh, privatizing material belonged to a previous age and um, uh, thereby sending people who, uh, uh, it, it's easy to say they should know better, but the truth is they don't know at all. And so uh, uh, sending them to some place where, you know, they can say, this is what we're about. We're about uh, uh, joining with and sharing with, uh, and this is the National Library, not simply of Israel, but by extension of the Jewish people. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me? Yeah. Okay, I'm Pearl Berger from Michigan University. I'm following on this same discussion. So um, it appears that the National Library has enough challenges facing it for itself and wants to be the library for the, the Jewish people in the world, but can't take it all on, at least not at this point. But, I mean, what you're asking for was something we would all want, but I don't know that they have the ability to to, uh, to just take it on at the moment. I'm wondering whether I'm just make it, uh, whether a suggestion would be um, forming a, another group, maybe in the United States for American libraries with Jewish content, that could be sort of a committee or a group that would work with the National Library and help to sort of to it would prevent you from having to deal with. 20 different institutions <coughs> on each matter rather to deal with a group that can contribute to work together and then deal with the National Library. Would that be a direction in which to move? Well, I love the idea, but you have to. It's well, not, you know, yeah. yeah. But it's not There are the possibilities of setting up some yeah. committees. I mean, yeah. It's not out of the question. Yeah. Well, well we can talk about <laughs> uh, Zachary Baker from Stanford University. Uh, somewhat different tack question relating to your plans for preservation of the digital content. I think I, you, you showed a slide with, and I think I heard a suggestion or an offer that uh, you would be willing to house for preservation purposes uh, digital content produced elsewhere. but. Could you say a little bit more about, uh, without getting too technical, the directions you're going in terms of the actual safeguarding of this uh, uh, digital uh, data? Well, we are now in, uh, in the process of uh, checking two systems, a uh, commercial system uh, on the market, there aren't a lot of those, so there are two competitors, and we'll make the decision in the next two months, and we'll start implementing. 
immediately afterwards. So that's, if you want the name, it's a, it's a rosette of ex libris and the cellar. It's widely used in the, mainly in archives. And what would be the mechanism for an institution, name your country or city, uh, to bring that? Well, there are different ways to do that. These are transfer the files, uh, mm -hmm. various formats. But already we're getting a lot of material from different places mm -hmm. without uh, doing preservation or different access. For example, the, the, the Hebrew manuscripts that we were working with our partners to get the digital files and making them accessible. Uh, Frank Mecklenburg, Lübeck Institute, New York. Uh, you were talking about uh, research into different user groups, and you were also saying that um, to sort of make users more clever in how to use the material, but I think to come from the other end and how we can make our materials more um, attractive, more intelligible, more broader in, in its appeal to different user groups. I mean, we are having also, I mean, you it was mentioned genealogy, which has become a very large user group. And for instance, to um, be able to connect uh, the, the family research community with, uh, for instance, um, historians who work in social history, <coughs> which could be a very fruitful uh, combination. And, um, but that's something that also should be uh, cross-national and, and, of course, uh, National Library as uh, sort of a, a transnational uh, institution would be a good point to Yes, also coordinate or to instigate some kind of uh, coordination on that part. Okay. Uh, in the first phase of building the strategy, is we are focusing on the next two to three years. And when we're talking about the broad public, that's where what we are investigating right now is focusing on Israel. Uh, we're not trying to take everything at one, at one bite. So first we try to understand what the Israeli public would consume from the digital content that will provide them. Of course, there are a lot of things that could also benefit uh, communities, Jewish communities outside of Israel. But uh, that's the main focus right now. And uh, well, there was an interesting research done by the Prime Minister Office that leads now a cultural heritage program throughout Israel. Uh, they done a research on what um, uh, traditional cultural heritage means. Uh, and a lot of people said, okay, I am very interested in, uh, in Jew Juda Judaism, in, uh, in Shabbat, in, and so on. But the, the only question that was missing in all that survey that cost a lot of money, because the numbers were very good, you know, 90% are interested in, cons in the, those, this content. Uh, what are they willing to do to use it? Are they, are they willing to do something for that? And this is something that we try to do in the current research, is to understand what is the next step, how to bring them to use the material that we, we will digitize. Okay. Um, and uh, the, it's not very easy to do the segmentation of the broad public and to understand what are the parts that are going to be using the material. And it's, a, it's even a more complicated matrix to when you're talking about research, educational system, and broad public, is how to prioritize all the different needs and how to make uh, the investment, the division of the investment with all those different uh, parts. Okay. I know we're running out. We're finished, okay. One question. One last question. Um, I just want to respond to Pearl. I think what I was really trying to say is, can we get Avi on an extra secretary? Avi on degrees. Avi on degrees, okay. No, he, he also gets extra. an office in the office. Yes. But the, idea here, the idea here is actually based on, on two, flow, uh, two slides. One of them is your slide. You have Israeliana, Judaica, Humanities, and I forget the Middle, 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 Middle East. Okay, and then Carol has a slide in which he has a complex workflow of tasks and subcommittees and subgroups. 
a, 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 I would go to my own library director, uh, and I think we all should be thinking about it, but when major institutions set a precedent for creating a new kind of structure for cooperation, that means that it's not us just kind of doing this on the fly. It means that libraries, not the national library, but all libraries recognize that we don't own anything in that traditional sense, that we're all providing a service of access and integration. And so by having a formalized structure as a cost built into a library budget to help facilitate this, because my collection doesn't stand by itself, my Holy Land collections, you know, your Holy Land, the British, so, the idea is to begin putting out there that cataloging is part of cost of acquisitions. Uh, facilitating cooperation and digital partnerships is part of everyday operations. Not that the National Library will be the, the, the chief of, of cooperation. And that he gets a secretary. And so as a first, perhaps, pragmatic step towards what you've been proposing, maybe just have a bulletin board on one of our websites, whether it's I have the Judaica Europeana website, or there's an American Association of Jewish Libraries, or, or some such, to it's which we can link, and people can post information or calls for partners or whatever information that they believe will be of interest to this constituency. And nowadays, it, I don't know if it's essential to have a moderator or whether this could almost run itself with a sort of a minimum of oversight. There are programs that allow you to post onto that website. Either you will give password to, to this constituency or you know, there are different ways of doing this. So maybe that's the first step and then think about the, the, the other needs and how to evolve on that. This is something that you can start with. Mm -hmm. Thank you.